What lies ahead for Rupert Murdoch and for News Corp? How will Britain's drama play out here in the United States? My next guest is one of the nation's leading First Amendment attorneys, Floyd Abrams. He has represented many leading media companies. He's defended the New York Times in the Pentagon's paper case. He is currently a partner at Cahill, Gordon and Rindell. Floyd Abrams, good to have you with us here on Taking Stock. Hey, good now, to have, be you, here. have you been watching and, and looking at the drama that's been unfolding in this, corp in this corporation? What advice, and I understand, you know, advice is worth exactly what you pay for it, so what free advice would you give Rupert Murdoch? Well, look, I think he's on the right uh, melody right now uh, by being abjectly apologetic and trying to deny personal responsibility. The question is whether that will work. Uh, the question is whether people, the parliament, the, the people in England and law enforcement, people here, will accept the notion that this was low enough and unknown enough that right. it was over. We're going to try to answer that question. My guests now are First Amendment attorney Floyd Abrams, and we now want to bring in Richard Torrenzano, chairman, chief executive of the Torrenzano Group, specializing in crisis management. Floyd Abrams, I just want to follow up on something you were discussing, this idea that, all right, the advice that you would be giving to Rupert Murdoch, basically they're doing the right thing, trying to get at the details of the case. If this had happened in the United States, and indeed I understand there's a FBI investigation that is currently underway to check to see whether they hacked into any of the phone voicemails of 9-11 victims, would the case be proceeding differently in the U.S.? Well, certainly would. I, I mean, yes, we, we'd have an investigation. We might have a congressional investigation as well, which would be conducted very differently, of course. Our cultures are so different uh, from, from over in the U.K. and and questions would have been tougher, harder, narrower, I think more focused. Uh, I think it would have been a lot harder to simply wind up by either saying, I don't know, or it's not our fault. And when you look at the business structure of News Corp, the fact that the properties in the UK account for a very small percentage of the company's overall sales. Do you think that there is going to be any business fallout for the overall company splitting off the UK operation? Would that limit some of the damage? Look, there wouldn't be a great financial loss to the company if they got rid of all their newspapers, including newspapers in the US. Uh, those newspapers are, by all accounts, though, very important to Mr. Murdoch and a source of a great deal of the power, the very genuine, very real power that he has had in England and here. Rich Torrenzano, has that power been damaged now? I think it has. Uh, I think it's uh, the the uh, the cable deal, the Sky deal has gone away. Uh, B Sky B, uh, B, right? Sky that was B. the attempt to buy the shares. That Huge deal gone News away, off own. the table, not knowing where that's going to go in the future. They've lost the biggest Sunday edition newspaper in England. That's very important. Uh, clearly, uh, Ruben Murdoch, from his reputation, has said, "I've had the worst day of my life." He's lost two very important executives. One had been with him for 52 years. So. For from a reputation and from a from a financial point of view, they've taken a very big hit here. I think uh, we all have to take a step back and we have to say to ourselves, why is this important? And I think it's important for one reason. It goes to the core of our democracy. When you have the police who have special powers in our, our democracies, whether it be here or in England or in other democracies, who can gather information that we can't gather, and you have news organizations who have reach and breath that we don't have as individual citizens. When they get together and they exchange information for money, that, that hits right at the core of our democracy. And that's why I think this is getting so much media attention and so much publicity. But it really goes to the legitimacy of the way the society is run. I think that would be much harder to do here just because of the difference in size of the country, the different degree of power influencers in this country. I mean, these, these people all know each other. I mean, they went to the same schools. They, they see each other. I don't mean the journalists and the bosses, but, but, I, but I mean the you people. You mean the, but the people that run people the various divisions of News Corp there, and then the politicians. Absolutely, and the politicians and the top of the police force. Uh, and well, I want to get your thoughts on that, because before Rupert Murdoch and James Murdoch testified today, before the Parliamentary yeah. Commission, uh, former members of the Metropolitan Police, Scotland yeah. Yard, they testified. And they described this relationship where they knew 
that members of their own staff were either being paid yeah. by the news organizations or indeed had relationships with these yeah, news organizations. Absolutely scandalous anywhere. What, what, what was uh, accepted, agreed to, tolerated at the best uh, as, as revealed today. The notion that the highest ranking people in the police force knew, knew about money changing hands, it, it is so disgraceful. I mean, we can argue about Murdoch, and, and he's got a lot of detractors here, but, but they, there's no argument to be had does this about then leave how a awful it is. Does this then leave a hollow feeling on the part of individuals that there is nobody there to protect their individual interests? Well, I think it is a part of the delegitimization of, of society over there. We have our own problems, but, but that's been going on for some time over there, uh, as it reflected in the scandal just last year uh, with respect to members of the, the House of Lords and Commons who took enormous unjustified tax deductions for building moats around their homes. The public couldn't stand it. Now, Mr. Murdoch was the one exposing that. He was involved in that. And the newspapers did a very good job in exposing that. Right. But we really have to be careful, though, not to lose the freedom of the press at the same time that, that we are rightly criticizing and indeed denouncing the abuses. Floyd Abrams, you mentioned this idea of power and the power that Rupert Murdoch's News Corp has, mm -hmm. particularly in the United Kingdom and also in the sure. United States. Is that power now permanently tarnished? It's hard, to, hard even to guess if it's permanently tarnished. It's tarnished. No doubt it's tarnished over there. And it's tarnished in all of his newspaper properties over there. He has a lot to overcome. Uh, he's got a lot of explaining to do uh, and, and a lot of effort that has to come. Here, I, I, think, I think it's less likely. I mean, no, no one has said anything at all about what the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal is a great newspaper. Uh, one can criticize if one chooses to on political grounds what it does, but it's a great newspaper and there's no suggestion of any impropriety there. Uh, the New York Post is much more like an English or Australian newspaper. Indeed, until the New York Post, we didn't have any real newspaper in the States other than the Inquirer-like tabloids uh, that focused as much uh, on uh, sex and violence uh, and we didn't have the sort of campaigns that are commonplace in the UK, campaigns to get this politician, uh, which terrify the English polls. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why they are now sort of uh, like a new social class, all aligned against Murdoch. All of them that tried so hard to appeal to him that, that were willing to do anything at his behest. Uh, are now trying very hard to disassociate themselves. Nothing and like would, having ex-friends. And they would love to bring him down, but uh, it, it'll take something more to bring him down. Rich Torrenzano, what about management at the uh, at News Corp? I mean, uh, Les uh, uh, Hinton uh, was the uh, head of the Wall Street Journal, Dow Jones. He's gone. Rebecca Brooks testifying today. She's been arrested. She's gone from News of the World. It, does this mean a whole management shakeup has to come? Chase Carney going to be? He's the chief operating officer. You think he's going to be appointed I, I think chief we could executive? Sit here, we could sit here and speculate about how the players are going to move around, but clearly there will be some movement. I think both at the management level and perhaps in the longer term at the board level. Uh, I think the board is going to be uh, probably uh, brought to bear more, maybe in the United States, uh, than uh, with shareholders. So this, this, this is than, an American than, company. That's an American right, company. Indeed. And there's been there's a lawsuit filed by shareholder yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. against uh, against News Corp. For the, 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 the other important thing is, I think this this story now starts to begin to shift to the United States. Sure. The Parliament uh, discussions are fairly over now. And I think what, we, what we're going to see in the states, Congressman Peter King, Republican of New York, who heads the Homeland Security C uh, Committee, has said he's going to have hearings. Uh, another a congressman has, who, who has oversight for the U.S. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act said he's going to have hearings. There's an FBI investigation going on. So I think as we go through the summer, as Congress finishes the business of our debt situation and comes out of maybe summer holiday, we're going to see this focus uh, in both the Congress as well as the Senate, as well as some of our regulatory If they were to find out, and we have no reason to know if it's true or not, if they were to find out 
that there was any wiretapping here, let alone of victims of the collapse of 9 of, at 9-11 of the World Trade Center, which was a charge of the Daily Mail uh, over there. Competing I mean, newspaper. If, if, yes, a competing. If anything like that happened here, then it's the end. Uh, uh, We'll just have to wait and see. Should, should News Corp uh, proceed with an internal investigation to deal with allegations in the United States? Well, now I have to act like a lawyer. Uh, I, I certainly would have said yes a few weeks ago uh, as to whether they should do it now when there are likely to be law en enforcement investigations at the same time of the same people. Uh, is, is harder. My answer why, why is that? Why? Would, would be uh, because he might have to produce it. Uh, be, Once he be, finds evidence. Uh, be, yes, uh, uh, because it gets very complicated when you learn things that you don't want to hear. Uh, but my, my advice, easy advice, and, and worth just what you said a few moments ago, would be yes, I think they are, and I bet they are. All right. I want to thank you, gentlemen, very much. Uh, Floyd Abrams, appreciate your time. And, of course, Rich Torrenzano, appreciate your insights. Thank you.